uh, of the UFA, again, the University of Amsterdam. And of course, I'd like to uh, welcome as, uh, very much uh, Professor Stefania Axella from Copenhagen University. Um, so I now give the floor to the candidate for the degree of doctor. With the permission of the Council of Deans, and in order to obtain the degree of doctor from Radboud University Nijmegen, I would like to defend in public my doctoral thesis entitled Beyond Vanilla, a search for lepton flavor violating set to L tau decays with the SLS detector. To introduce my thesis, I would like to first briefly introduce to you the standard model of particle physics. The standard model um, is a pillar of modern physics. It attempts to use uh, elementary particles to um, describe the universe uh, with elegantly with just 17 elementary particles. It is able to explain a wide range of phenomena. Um, these particles are the fundamental building blocks of the universe. For example, atoms in the matter that we interact with every day are made of quarks and electrons, which are elementary particles in the standard model. Uh, some of these particles are also force carriers. For example, the electromagnetic force is uh, carried by the particles called the photon, uh, which are also known as particles of light. However, despite its success, the standard model is also known to be incomplete for the reason that it could not explain some of the important phenomena that we know of. For example, it couldn't explain gravity, which is a fundamental force of nature. Another example is that it also couldn't explain why in the universe we uh, see a lot of matter, but not so much antimatter, which according to the standard model should uh, also exist uh, in similar abundance. And to improve our model in order to explain this phenomena, physicists are asking the question, uh, where does the standard model uh, start to fail and become inac inaccurate? Um, among other places, uh, one of the places where the standard model could start to become inaccurate uh, is uh, concerns a group of particles called the charged leptons. These leptons uh, come in three different flavors known as the electron, the muon, and the tau lepton. In the standard model, these particles do not change flavors, or in other words, the numbers always remain the same. Uh, but what if, contrary to the standard model, they do actually change flavors, but only uh, very rarely? Then that would be lepton flavor violation. Uh, and this is a beyond the standard model phenomenon. Uh, specifically, my thesis search for lepton flavor violating set boson decays. The set boson is a particle uh, in the standard model that is relatively heavy and short-lived. It is known that the set boson can decay into a lepton and an antilepton of the same flavor. These are the standard model decays, and it, is, uh, in, it has been observed uh, many times in experiments. But what I'm interested in is to find out whether the set boson can also decay into leptons of different flavors, and that is lepton flavor violation. So far, uh, these decays have not been observed, but actually there's no good reason for why nature forbid this uh, decays. And in beyond the standard model theories, uh, some predict that these decays could happen possibly up to once in every million decays. Uh, and to search for these decays, uh, we make use of data from the Large Hadron Collider and the Atlas experiment. The Large Hadron Collider, or LHC, is the world's most powerful particle accelerator, uh, which is located at CERN in Geneva, and it's a 27-kilometer ring uh, buried deep underground, and it is uh, it used to collide particles at nearly the speed of light. And the Atlas detector is a particle detector at the LHC. It is uh, 46 meters long and 25 meters tall and wide, and this enormous detector is able to record um, up to 1,000 collisions per second. It is estimated that roughly 8 billion set bosons has been produced in the data taking period uh, from 2015 to 2018. And this is the data that uh, makes the, my thesis possible. So in the detector, protons are made to collide with each other. These collisions are so energetic that uh, new particles could be produced in the process. 
And among these particles, some of them could be the side boson that we are interested in. And these particles could decay into other final particles that actually reach our detector. And among those, uh, there could be the leptons coming from the side boson decay. However, what we can actually observe are just the final particles that uh, reach our detector. And what actually happens at the collision must be inferred by careful analysis. In a nutshell, the analysis consists of many four steps. The first is to do data acquisition using uh, the LHC and Atlas. After which, we have to reconstruct and identify, meaning that we have to turn the uh, digital readout of the detector into actually meaningful physical quantities of the particles and identify which particle we are observing. After which, uh, we need to classify the uh, collision events uh, where we determine whether a collision event observed is likely a, a signal event or likely a si standard model background event. Moreover, in order to compare what we observe with theories, we have to perform simulation and statistical analysis. And one of the things that make my thesis uh, different from similar experiments in the past uh, is the use of neural networks in the classification step. So the results of the analysis is that, uh, slightly disappointingly, no, there's no evidence for lepton flavor violating that decays. However, in science, uh, even if we couldn't find evidence for something, that is still very important results. In this case, it helps us constrain uh, beyond the standard model theories. Uh, with my analysis, I was able to set uh, stringent upper limits on the probability of these decays, which have superseded limits from previous experiments that were set over two decades ago. In conclusion, a new sensitivity for lepton flavor violation searches has been reached. And even though no LFE was observed, new constraints have been set. And the importance of this result is that it shows the capability of the LHC and the Atlas experiment to perform uh, these searches, and it marks a change of error as sensitivity surpasses uh, previous experiments. And with the still ongoing data taking and future upgrades, I believe that uh, these results are just the first of the many more exciting results that are still ahead of us. Having presented this summary of my doctoral thesis, I return the floor to the rector.